This is lesson one in, in our series of lessons about Adobe InDesign. We assume when you look at this that you've already gone through the lessons for Adobe Illustrator and that a lot of the tools and parts of the interface will be familiar to you. As you can see, some of it looks very much like the Illustrator interface. And I'm going to point out a few things here. Uh, for example, our control palette, control panel up here. Uh, much as we had with Adobe Illustrator, this con control panel in in InDesign is extremely powerful and you can do a lot of work, almost everything from up here in the control panel. We have our dock over here with our other panels and we can access those by clicking on them and we can add panels to it. If we don't have a, can't find a panel here that we want, we can go to the window menu and they will be up here. There's uh, some that have several uh, uh, drop-down menus for other things. For instance, an, an important one is our type and tables that has different things we can use to access our typography. And then the styles one will show us all the different kinds of styles we can apply. You notice that we have a lot of options here. We have paragraph styles. These apply only two entire paragraphs and involves such things as letting, uh, space before and after, indents, uh, and so forth. And they also can include text styles. And then we have character styles, and character styles apply only to uh, words or individual letters. These might be things like uh, special fonts that we use for bold or, or for emphasis. And we also can have object styles where we set up things like text frames and so forth and apply a style to them automatically. So there's all, all these are very handy. Let's start a new document. I'm going to close up this over here. And um, as with the Illustrator, we can choose print or web. Uh, print is what we're going to choose, letter size. Notice we have facing pages. If we want to do two page spreads, we need to have facing pages checked and we also can start out with a certain number of pages for example if we're doing signatures of eight four or eight pages we can start out with a full signature we're going to start with four pages which would be um, two two signatures uh, front and back uh, on a page two pages uh, next to each other front and back and we also can set our number of columns and so here uh, I'm going to set six columns that would be really three columns but each one divided into half so we can do insets and have more flexibility we can set our gutter we can set our margins and you notice this little link right here as long as that is linked we can only change these uh, together so if we make them all four make the first one four they're all going to be four Lots of times we don't want to do this. We want asymmetrical pages. So for instance, we might do the top as three picas, the bottom as six picas, the inside as two, and the outside maybe we'll make that six as well. So we get an asymmetrical page. Now you also have a way to set the bleed, and this would be where you would place photographs that you want going off the page, bleeding off the page, and it would be trimmed back to the page size. So let's set a bleed line of one pica. And then we can also set room for slugs and printing targets and so forth. We won't do that on this one. So here's our basic page. And if we go to our pages panel, you see we have four pages here. And we can add pages, we can renumber them, we can reorder them using our page palette. We also can reorder them just by clicking and dragging and so right now you can't see much difference but um, what it's doing is just reorder. If we had stuff on these pages it would reorder them however we wanted to do it. Okay, let's start with some type and I'm going to use my text tool. You notice we have a selection tool just as with Illustrator for selecting entire objects so text boxes and pictures and we have a direct select tool for editing the shape of objects much less useful in InDesign than in Illustrator but something we might use in advanced uh, advanced sort of designs where we wrap text around a, uh, a shape 
We have a pen tool. We won't use that much, but we will be using rectangle uh, frames and rectangle tools to create shapes on our page. And then we'll get to some of these other tools later as we move along. We also have our fill and stroke, and uh, we know how to use that from Illustrator, and we might, we'll be applying that as well. I'm going to start with my text tool, and we use the text tool just as an illustrator for two things, uh, to click and edit text, and also to create text boxes. And, and unlike Illustrator, you can only put type in a text box. You can't just click and have a piece of type floating around. So I've created this text box. You can see my cursor blinking. I'm going to insert what we call placeholder text. It's sort of a bogus Latin that designers use and so we can see what happens. You notice it's all one column even though our page grid is divided into columns. So we can go up here to our control panel and change that to three columns. You notice when we did that we got a little red symbol down here and that means there's overset type. There's more type than meets the eye here and if we go to our selection tool and click on that, we can jump the type, create another text box, and we can see how much type is left. I'm going to delete this for now. We're going to put more type on the next page, and we'll do that again by clicking with our selection tool. And then we can use our page palette to navigate and create another text box here. Now this is one of the really powerful uh, functions of InDesign, how we control type as it flows from one page to the next. Notice if we have like two lines of type here. If I go back to page one and I use my selection tool to drag the top of that box down, that text then must flow. It's pushed into the next page here. Okay, I'm going to create some more placeholder text. And if I have more text here, I can again click and place it on the next page. So we can have text flowing over three pages, 20 pages, however many pages you want. If you ever want to see the order in which the text is flowing across your pages, you go to the, the view menu to extras to show text threads, okay, and then it will give you these arrows. So if I add another text box, it will show me that flow as well. So that's kind of handy if you ever get lost, especially as you start moving pages around to get them to print out in into folios and so forth, then you'll want to do that sort of thing. Again, we can adjust our columns. three columns. This one we can bring back to one column if we want. And there we go. So that's how we get started and how we uh, flow our text. And uh, in our next lesson we're going to format text and save them as paragraph styles and character styles. And then in our third lesson we'll learn how to place pictures and used uh, text wrap.